I'm Alicia Rennie. I'm a trustee with the library here, Missouri Community Library, and we um, have some really interesting speakers. And today we have Eloise Gerard. Yeah, yeah. Um, she's from the Vermont Center for Eco Studies um, as a seasonal biologist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she works on the Common Loon Conservation Project, which started, did it start in 2021? The, no, it's been there. It's been there, but yeah. when you started. In, yeah. Okay. And um, one of the things she's really interested in sort of facilitating is thinking about getting people to think about how they can develop a relationship with the environment, mm -hmm. with things in the environment. And so I'll let her... Yeah, so you're going to hear I have an accent. Um, I'm from Quebec originally, and I moved to Vermont eight years ago. And uh, before I moved, I worked with Ducks Unlimited, Canadian Wildlife Services, and I did a project in the Arctic, the Northwest Territories on shorebirds, uh, waterfall, Canadian geese, eider, and, and the Loon project is my third season. And so I work full time from mid April to mid September, and we do a loom monitoring for the whole state of Vermont. And um, yeah, I'm going to talk about it later, but we wa work a lot with many, many volunteers. And um, yeah, and Eric Hansen, I'm sure you heard about him, um, is my supervisor, the loom specialist. <laughs> So yeah, Vermont Center for Eco Studies is a small nonprofit, and they have many other projects, uh, but I only work on the loon conservation project. But the, their goal is really to mix um, science with community engagement. Yeah. Yeah. And please, uh, you can stop me anytime for a question and make the presentation uh, more interesting. Or, Hello, yeah. Mademoiselle. <laughs> Hello. Too much noise. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I just started last year to do a few presentations, so I'm not super, uh, yeah, I'm a little shy, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> um, I thought about starting and showing you uh, the four distinctive uh, calls that the loon do. Am I closer? Yeah. Hi, there's no chair there. Um, yeah, so loons don't, sing like birds, they have uh, calls. And I'm going to show you some of them. OK. So this one is called the hoot, H-O-O-T, and it's a really soft call. It's not a distress or alarm call, and it's to draw the different individual together or uh, give uh, encouragement to the chick. And so I don't know if anybody heard that one. Before. Yeah. <laughs> um, What do you think this one means? Huh? Where are you? Yeah, yeah. Where are you? Where are you? Um, yeah, it sounds like a wolf howling almost. And yeah, the basic message is that where are you? Yeah. Where are you? This one means. Here I am. Huh? Here I am. <laughs> yeah, this one is the yodel, and it's only the male that make that sound, and it's unique to each individual. Does it make sense? Each male has this unique yodel, and basically, it's like I am a male. I'm prepared to define my territory, and yeah, watch out. <laughs> and then. Uh, it's funny because the more the, the male is like mature or older, the, the yodel is going to be deeper frequency, low frequency. And if it's a younger male, it's higher frequency, but they do more um, 
repetition of the sound and it's the more they do that the more it shows like their motivation yeah it's, it's anyway there's a guy who did his uh, doctorate on that and it's fascinating fascinating oh yeah and the other one i'm sure you will recognize this one too yeah. any idea what this one means Yeah, it's an alarm call. If uh, even if a plane is flying over, they're gonna do that. If a boat or somebody comes too close to the nest or the chicks, uh, yeah, it's a laughing call. But at night also, they can do that between each other. Like it's almost like a duet, and so yeah. Oh, yeah, here we go. Um, yeah, I'm sure, I don't know if I'm going to teach you a lot of information in that, but basic loon facts, they live between 20 and 35 years old. And I don't know if you guys saw the article in the, um, VT Digger recently about the longest, the oldest uh, loon that was uh, banned by Eric. Uh, anyway, he, he died, uh, someone uh, find the, the loon. And it was a loon that was bended 30 something years ago by Eric. And at, at first we thought it was just, he died of old age, but then we did the necropsy or like the autopsy for animals. And we find out that he got hit by a boat. Anyway, it was really sad. I think, uh, I think I had, oh yeah. If people want to read it. Yeah. Um, yeah, they start breeding around three to five years old. And the average of chick would be one chick every other year. So they don't have a lot of productivity, but they live for a long time. Uh, yeah, there's no difference between male and female other than the weight. The female weighs 20 to 25% less. And it's between 14 and 18, 18 pounds, so they're big, big birds. And um, a lot of people think they mate for life, but it's not accurate. Um, we, um, they change mate every five or six years, but there is a um, couple, couple that can stay over 20 years together, but it's, not, it's really not um, common. Yeah. Uh, there's five species of loon. Here in Vermont, we only have the common loon, and it's covered in um, Canada, all north of America. I, uh, yeah. And then uh, the other species is the yellow bill, the Arctic loon, Pacific, and um, red-throated loon. Yeah, just to show the anatomy, so they're more real. They're not ducks. They're more related to penguins. Um, they have their own um, evolutionary trajectory. Um, and unlike birds, their bones is filled, so they're not hollow. So that makes them really heavy birds, and it makes them able to dive um, really like the good diver. It's also the other names, a great northern diver. Um, so they can dive um, deep. And their legs are really far back, and that they are super clumsy on land. They don't go to land. They do basically everything on water. Uh, their nest is very close to the water. Um, yeah, so okay, that's uh, yeah. Um, oh yeah, they need also to take to be able to take off when they leave. It takes a quarter miles. Uh, mm. Yeah, they need a long yeah long distance to be able, because they're so heavy. Yeah, um, yeah the beak, dagger-like beak, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's, they, it makes them uh, good at like fishing, grabbing their, their fish. Um, yeah. Yeah, the red eye, it's like, um, it's a pigment in the retina that filters the light when the loon dives and they need the water surface and allow for sight, so that it makes them uh, better fishermen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How old? Uh, 
uh, can the chicks be and still be carried around by their... Oh, on their uh, back, yeah. Is it also by the father? The yeah, they both, um, yeah, I'm going to talk about it, but yeah. So both male and female do the incubation. Um, and then uh, the chick's going to ride on the back of their parents, either the male or the female, for a few weeks. Um, help them against the predator and keep them warm too. Oh. Yeah. Um, I have this funny story that my daughter really liked. Is, uh, there was a pair of loon that had just lost their chick. And at the same time, a duckling, mallard, got abandoned. Or, and the loon family abducted the duckling. And the duckling oh. was like, <laughs> I think I have a picture it was riding on the back of the oh, loo. There's a lot of online. It was in Michigan. Or it's pretty it's in 2018 or something. And um, those mallards, they don't, they're not really diver most of the time. They don't eat fish. But this one was like well fed <laughs> with fish. And yeah, it was riding on the back until it was pretty big. <laughs> if you look it up online, there's a lot of picture about it. But yeah. Oh yeah, so I, I thought about just going over the season and the months and tell you about the life of Loon. But in April, usually a few days after the ice break, break off, uh, the loons, you're going to see the loons uh, coming back. So the loons from Vermont come from the New England coast. Um, and yeah, usually it's five or six days after the ice is gone, they, they come on the, on the lake. And they return basically to the same lake every year. Um, the chicks, though, they're going to stay in the ocean for four, six years. They won't return to the lake uh, until a few years later. Yeah. So they, and, so they winter in southern New England? Yeah, in the New England coast, uh, all, the, like, all the way southern um, New Hampshire, Rhode Island. Okay. Yeah. And, but the different, the Midwest loon go to the Gulf of Mexico and Florida, and the West Coast loon go all the way to Baja, California. So they have different migratory, yeah. Because I have a picture of loons in Acadia. And, yeah. And as the uh, ranger said, they migrate to there. Yeah. They don't stay there over, over the winter in Acadia. Yeah, no, yeah. Oh, they don't stay over, yeah, maybe they go a bit, yeah, they go a little south. But uh, some of the uh, loon can stay on Lake Champlain. If the water is always like open water, they, you can see loon all winter, yeah. Um, all right, so their perfect habitat is a lake big enough for them to land and take off. Um, also deep enough to have like a good fish population and a good clear for good visibility to chase those, uh, those uh, fish. Um, some um, shoreline habitat for them to nest and um, also some cove or shelter from the wind or that where they can raise their chicks. So that's the, like the ideal and it's 10 acres minimum. Um, the size of the lake, yeah, they, they need to, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, May and June is the courtship. It's pretty simple with the loon, build dipping, swimming next to each other. And um, yeah, the only, basically the only time they go on land is to copulate and then they go back in the water. Mm. Yeah, so the, um, oh, um, Linda, that's the, the eagle oh. guard, yeah. Oh, okay. And so the nest is also pretty simple, a pile of muds and whatever vegetation they can find. Uh, because they're so bad at they are walking on land, they just grab whatever is around. Um, yeah, and with a little depression in the middle, so the eggs stay in place. Uh, and this one is like, it's a raft, so it's made, man-made. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to mention it later, but we use that when water is fluctuating a lot. And um, so, yeah, we have good success with those, uh, those rafts. Um, yeah, we lost with the flood two weeks ago. We lost a few nests. 
um, yeah, it was pretty sad to, in Waterbury, their pair was like trying so hard to like add material and yeah, but yeah. They return to the nest every night? Yeah, if they like, uh, with the raft, they almost return always to their, their raft. If it's natural, they might change slightly the location, but usually um, same spot. More or less, yeah. I mean, after the chick is born, they, they still go back to the nest. Oh, no, yeah, no. So is. once the, the chick is hatched, they leave the nest and they won't return. Yeah, they leave the chick as soon as they hatch. Yeah. Oh. But the two, so, and they lay uh, usually uh, two eggs, and the two eggs won't hatch at the same time. There's a few between 12 to 40 hours difference in the hatching time between the two eggs. So one parent's gonna leave with the first chick and then when the other parent's gonna stay on the nest until the second one. Or sometime after one chick hatch, they abandon the second egg. Yeah, I have one egg in that container. But um, yeah, I can show you the eggs. So can pass it around, but it's three, three sizes um, chicken egg. Yeah, exactly. You can, yeah. This one is not too stinky. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, and the yeah, and then the chicks for protection is either right on the back of the parent, under the wing, or yeah. And next year they'll all come back. No, the chicks gonna stay in the ocean for a few years and. That at about eight weeks, the chick is pretty much independent, yeah, and self-sufficient, and he, he does his own thing, yeah. But um, most of the nests are done between May 20 and June 10. Eighty percent of the nests are built during that period, yeah. And then if it fell, um, they can re-nest. Did you have a question? Oh, okay. Um, yeah. yeah, that was the incubation. Uh, um, so the nest, when the, the most successful is on the raft, the picture I show, with the, that's 87% successful. On island, they really like island too, 65% successful, marshes 60%, and then shorelines is 50%. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, those. Um, so the, yeah, I, I said that babies are called chicks. They leave the, and so there's a big because there's such a time difference between the hatching of the two eggs. The first chick is often bigger than the second one, and sometimes it could be some uh, riv rivalry, siblings rivalry. Yeah, var yeah. Um, yeah. Every year we collect a chick that starve or got like picked up by the other chick. It, yeah. It is like it's really hard to re rehabilitate them. Uh, Vince in Quiche can take them, do a, like a general uh, evaluation, but for a day or two, but they don't have like the salt um, uh, basin for them and we used to have to drive to Maine, like six hour drive, but now they don't take the loon anymore. So this, yeah, it's, it's hard, yeah. It, yeah, and they don't do, they really don't do well with the rehabilitation. Mm. Yeah, but it has been some case, successful case. Um, this year we rescued one that had like fishing line all wrapped up, um, so yeah, and I'm going to talk about it later, but we cut the fishing line and it, it was good to go. Yeah. yeah, so the first day they can already do some shallow dives. Um, eight days they start like be able to find their own food. It's mostly like insect or, I don't know, little arthropod, yeah, insect. Um, and uh, six to eight weeks, uh, they're already self-sufficient and adult, the size of an adult. Yeah. Yeah, this one. <laughs> it's, uh, someone took that picture this spring. It's just so cute. Yeah. 
Yeah, they can dive, the adult can dive 200 feet they, and stay underwater up to three minutes, but the average is uh, for about 45 seconds. Mm. Yeah, so four weeks. Yeah, they start, the beak starts to be a bit longer. Uh, six to seven weeks, the feather, the adult feather. Get oh, yeah, that's the, the, the yeah. <laughs> the the first year? The, yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, not the black and white, but like yeah, the, the, the oh, no, that's going to yeah. be, yeah, later. Yeah. Uh, that was, <laughs> this presentation was originally for my daughter, so. <laughs> funny, but, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so the loon, the, the eggs have many predators, all of the skunk, the raven, um, the fish is for the, the chick, but the other, the raccoon, and then uh, the chick, snapping turtle, um, bass, and eagle. But the adult, they don't have many predator, but they have they face a lot of different threats. Um, I mention that. But. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. So basically, August and the whole summer, they just spend time feeding. They can eat all of, up to two pounds of fish uh, every day per adult. Yeah. Yeah. They eat crayfish. And, yeah. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. September, October, they practice flying, and then uh, in November they're gonna start the migration. The adult lives about three weeks before the the, the chicks, and the chick for some reason they know how to get to the coast, and yeah. Yeah, November. Um, oh, yeah, so, yeah, it takes, a, yeah, I don't know if you've seen them taking off. It takes a, a long distance. Yeah, it's a quarter mile. Uh, the adult, they're going to molt uh, once they are, they are in the ocean, when they've, they've done the migration. And they do the migration basically nonstop. In two days, a few days, they are already on the coast. They can uh, fly uh, 60 uh, miles per hour. Um, yeah, yeah, they fast. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, so here you see better the, the migration or the range, the winter range. Yeah, I think I had the arrow, but the Vermont goes here, the Midwest goes Gulf of Mexico, Florida, and the West Coast all the way to Baya, California. Um, yeah, so in 1983, there was only seven nests, and uh, only nine chicks survived. And, um, and last year, 106 nests and 88 chicks survived. And this year we have 107 nests and 103 chicks, but we wait, on, we wait until the end of August to do um, the final count for chick survivor, survival. Why were there so, why were there so few in my uh, Like I, I asked that, that question to Eric, and it's basically they were facing the same issue that they face today, but there was like nothing really that, that was made like the shoreline habitat, uh, the flooding or the water level fluctuation. We didn't have any um, tools. Uh, now we're using the raft. We're in contact with the, the dam operator to, to, so they can uh, like manage better uh, the water level. Um, there was also lots of um, um, poisoning, the pesticide, yeah. DDT, all of that. Um, yeah, lead. lead, which lead I'm going to talk about, it, but lead is becoming again a, a big issue. Um, 
Yeah, so we have, we're just starting this project this year and we're going to be installing uh, lead sinkers and monofilament collection tube um, at different lakes and boat launches. And we work with Lake Association to help us monitoring those tubes and help promoting. And um, yeah, so lead poisoning and monofilament, like when people discard the fishing line, it's almost 50% of all the death um, of loon for the past uh, 10 years. Um, so yeah, lead, uh, how they get poisoned with lead is either someone is fishing and the loon's gonna grab the fish and the lead at the same time, or sometime when the line is discarded and um, the lead gets in the bottom of the lake, the loon don't see the difference between the sinkers and like the little stones and they swallow them and it helps them for the digestion. And um, they don't show any symptom for lead poisoning until it's already too late and it's already in all the system. Um, and then at, in that case, we just have to euthanize them. There's no way to um, clean them uh, from lead poisoning. Um, yeah, so, yeah, so the, this year we already, we rescued one with fishing line. We found one that was already like died of all the fishing line. He couldn't feed himself. And uh, last year, lead sinker, we, out of 10, there was like uh, three that were lead poisoning. Um, yeah, and people have them in their fishing tackle box and they don't know. Um, half ounce are illegal to sell or use, but bigger, it's still uh, legal to use. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's, yeah. Yeah. It's just like, it's so bad. And the, the, all the fishing line, it takes 600 years to, it stay in the nature, in the environment for 600 years. At least. Yeah. So yeah, that was the, the rescue we did on Lake Rescue. Um, someone like, just took the picture and then they put it on the Facebook page and then someone was like, whoa, look, she had, they have like a fishing line. And then we waited until um, the incubation was done and they had their chick. So we, we didn't want to disturb the incubation. So we did the, um, the rescue and it worked out great. Um, but the chick died for another reason, uh, uh, eagle, yeah, recently. But the, the parent, the female was good. No? Do you net them? How, how do you yeah, them? Oh, yeah, night capture, so it's at night. And we use a motor boat and a big spotlight. And it works great when they have chick because they kind of stay close to the chick and they not dive as much as they would if they didn't have a chick. And then once we wait until it's totally dark and then we spot um, the loon and then it gets like all mesmerized by the light. And then with a big net, we like scoop it. <laughs> And then, and then we do all the measurement and blood sample, um, put some bands to be able to recognize the adult or, uh, without having to catch it again. Um, yeah, that was it. Yeah. How do you get them to relax? Oh, uh, it's hard. So we need like four people almost oh, to do that. Like yeah. someone is holding the loon on their laps. Um, yeah, someone driving the motorboat, someone is on the boat with the net, another person has the spotlight, and then like two person handling the bird. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of uh, people. Yeah, they, they, they're strong and they, yeah. They're big. They're big, yeah. My, my arms are always so sore after. Uh, so yeah, that's an example of, um, we use the model, that's the collection tube, we use the model from the Friends of Waterbury. Uh, they've been, they started do, using those tubes a few years ago and they, they did their own design and uh, they're much more appealing, I would say, than the, the white convent, traditional one. And also um, we put the lid so the lid doesn't open all the way up, so less chance for people to put trash. Um, yeah, so we designed that. And yeah, and we have, this goes over the tube and this one on the tube. 
And uh, yeah, so this after next week, uh, there's going to be over 30 install. And it's been really great to work with Lake Association and Volunteer. Fish and Wildlife were a bit hesitant because they had tried in the past and um, they just got like so much trash and things. So, but they give us the archie because we, yeah, we work so closely with uh, volunteers and uh, members. So, yeah. So hopefully, yeah. Yeah, that was just to show. Uh, is there uh, an alternative to using the lead? Yeah, so there are different, um, there's like ceramic, uh, bismuth, uh, uh, steel. Oh, they, yeah. They're a little bit more expensive than lead, but apparently they work as, as great, yeah. Is it, is it an effort to ban lead? Or so the half ounce are banned already, half ounce uh, sinkers. Uh, but then you have all the hunting, uh, lead, how do you call it, shot, 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 gunshot, yeah. Those are still legal, gunshot, yeah. Um, maybe eventually. But I think it's a lot of education, like people, oh, look in your old tackle box, or, yeah. Because, I mean, the lead is, is bad not only for loon, it's bad for all the... Like for us, for all the other birds people. and uh, yeah, people and yeah, um, yeah. It's just a picture. Uh, this one um, had his wing all flip. I think an eagle had tried to uh, try in, but um, it had healed the wrong way. So <laughs> I'm, I'm telling all the sad story, but it, it, we do. Uh, we also this year we rescue a loon. Uh, after rain, sometimes they land on pavement because with the water on the pavement, it reflects and they think it's a lake. Yeah, um, yeah so they crash hard. Yeah, um, that this one was fine. We, yeah, we just brought it to a big, other big lake. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, this is a oh yeah volunteer <laughs> bee. Um, this is a, the, so we always, when we bend the loons, we always put a metal band with the individual unique numbers. And then we put like different combination, uh, color combination bands. Um, we can see uh, blue over orange on one leg and uh, green dots on the other. But um, yeah, that's the shape of the legs of a loon. Yeah, you can pass it around, but they, they kind of flat and big. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Um, yeah, so we work with over 300 volunteers all over the state. Um, volunteer, it's the, it, it could be from um, just doing the loon watch, annual loon watch day, to helping out with the signs when we put nesting signs, um, building a raft. Um, yeah, there's different levels of uh, involvement, but yeah, uh, just an example, uh, Lake Rescue, it, that, the fact that they had just started nesting on that lake in May, like people really talk to each other and like, yeah, yeah it, it creates some nice uh, bound between the people. And um, yeah, before that, it was so hard to find people helping us with the monitoring of the lake and things, and now, they try to nest, and um, now we have like <laughs> a lot of people involved. And yeah, all ages. Um, no, it's great. Yeah, it's it's great. Uh, um, yeah, if you, that's all. But if you um, can help, try to answer some of your questions. Um, how do you volunteer to help? I mean, uh, mm -hmm. close. Telling people about that, just one thing. Yeah, it can be uh, so many different things. But if you want to volunteer, what are you? Ex what should you expect? That's what are you going to be doing? It's um, I get, we can send you like uh, if you live close by a lake, by example, it can be just uh, keeping track. Uh, are they loom there? And if they 
started nesting, like checking once in a while on the nest, are they still on nest, or oh, it fell, got predated. Mm -hmm. um, some of the nests we put like nesting warning signs to help, uh, could be just putting those signs out. Um, I have different. Linda, <laughs> what's your experience of a variable in Sierra? Uh, well, our home is right on Valley Lake. I mean, we're and so we um, had some mixed uh, results of the loons successfully uh, hatching chicks on shore, and mm -hmm. so. I think you had a new grant this year yeah. to add additional rafts, so we had permission to uh, build a raft and Eloise brought the materials and we put it, after discussion with our Lake Association, um, I must say there was some resistance. Mm -hmm. uh, not every resident of a lake is thrilled to have loon rafts or loons. Some people feel that they compete with the fishing. So we... Um, <laughs> We said we'll put it right off of our shore, and we have a, a cove. And actually, it worked well. Um, although historically, funny enough, the loons never came and fished on our side of the lake, so we were, you know, thinking they might not really like it. They they came uh, yeah, right they away, came. and they were very loyal to that raft. They they started uh, hard sitting from June 1st, but unfortunately they had two eggs. I, I did see them. And it was easy for us to keep track mm -hmm. um, because it was right off of our shore. We live on the lake. But I know a lot of lakes, their volunteers, you know, paddle or, or go out mm -hmm. to where the balloons are and they make daily forays out and report. But ours was pretty easy. And, they even uh, stopped using their beach. <laughs> yeah, we you stopped. Stop swimming, we, you we put out our signs, and we haven't been. We haven't been to that side of our beach <laughs> port since June first. Uh, everyone was. Everyone was really good. The, all the residents were very good yeah. about staying away, and um, and we stayed away too. And um, but then uh, one egg disappeared, and I would see this when they left the nest, you know, they would switch off. I never mm -hmm. saw an actual switch, mm -hmm. but I would see, and so I'd rush out there with my binoculars. So I did see two eggs, then one disappeared, and we don't know why. Oh. The other one I just turned in today, uh, we pulled it from the nest, it was non-viable. She's been sitting on it uh, for over 45 days. And it should only have been 28 days, yeah. and she or he, you know. Um, and then finally, they, they just gave up a few days ago. But uh, we don't know why it was non-viable. We had uh, multiple visits from a, mm -hmm. a bald eagle. Um, when we first built the nest, uh, Eloise brought in a little conifer to put on it. And the next, literally, like yeah, next exactly. day, a beaver came and chewed that down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, we had turtles and herons and... Uh, um, uh, muskrat on mm. the raft before the loons came. I didn't see any of them competing for it. But it was a great year, I mean good year of experience for us to have such hands-on view and to have up close and personal idea of their, their season. Yeah, thank you so much. It reminds me of all the things I forgot to say, but yeah, the loon <laughs> population is doing really, really well right now, but we just have to keep monitoring because of all the different threats they're facing. But like the raft, we don't put raft all um, at any occasion. We, if they, the pair try to nest two or three years in a row and it failed, then we're like, okay, you guys tried. Uh, we're gonna give you a little hand. And then, so then we try to put a raft mm -hmm. on. And um, yeah, we got uh, two years ago this big grant uh, $400,000 and it was from an oil spill that happened in Rhode Island in long time, in 2003. But it had killed 500 adult loon mm -hmm. that were in migration on their coast. Mm -hmm. So yeah, different loon partner, um, loon in Adirondack and Maine and New Hampshire, they all got like money to um, do some uh, mitigation. And uh, the network with uh, people is really strong. We communicate a lot with the Loon in Maine and uh, New York and even like Canada. We have once a year uh, annual meeting and we share a lot of information. Um, no, it's, it's, it's really great. Yeah. And one lake here, um, I think it was in your newsletter, they put in a 
cam. Uh, yes, a cam, yeah. a, a cam to the, you know broadcast the activities for all mm -hmm. the people who mm -hmm. could sign up for it. You know, so that yeah. was really yeah. good. Out, you know. Yeah, we uh, bought outreach. a few cameras too, also to put on this. Like, oh, that they keep abandoning, and we're not sure why. Um, but also uh, this year, a uh, bunch of volunteers that have put net yeah. in a camera. Uh, there was some beaver harassment going on. <laughs> like we don't really know. We kind of knew about it, but uh, this year was like so. They're chasing the loon and flapping yeah. their tail. I would, I would have thought it would have been the opposite. Yeah. But no. Yeah. Yeah. yeah sorry. Yeah. Um, when mm. you put the map up. Yes. Yeah, so. I didn't realize that in Vermont we're kind of on the southern yeah, edge of so. the range. Is there yeah. a concern that? Loons will have a harder time with a warmer climate here. Yeah, so that's one of the things. The issue is uh, it gets warmer and they tend to leave their nest like more often to cool uh, cool down and then it gives like more time for predator to get to the eggs or so yeah, it's gonna be definitely and also it, the warmer water temperature you know, it might change all the ecosystem and so definitely something we want to Try to find like collect start collecting more data on all those different uh, yeah. Our we noticed that our birds uh, mm -hmm. had their beak open when sitting yeah. on the nest a lot. Yeah. Is, is that because they're hot? Yeah, it's all they help them the like general. regulating yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. the yeah the temperature yeah. Oh, there was we it? live in Connecticut. Yeah. And uh, Barkhamsted Reservoir right up on the northern Connecticut yeah. Massachusetts line. A few years ago, we saw a loon. Yeah. I had never seen a loon in Connecticut. And, you know, was he lost? I had yeah. no idea. No, they start even like, um, I think in my old map in 1983. Did I have a map? Uh, I just want to show. Back. Oh. oh, yeah, that was this one. Yeah, they were mostly northern of Vermont, and now it's like, is it the one after? Yeah, oh, now it's really more like central, south. Oh. Um, so so basically, the warming there, they're yeah, <laughs> yeah. Do they know why some loons, when they migrate, go further south to warmer water, and some stay? It's more like the trajectory. The Midwest uh, population go more south, but I don't know why. Yeah, it's a good question. I'm not sure why they don't go. To the new and maybe it's the ocean, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and uh, the loon from Vermont are bigger than the loon of the Midwest because the migration is shorter. Yeah, huh. oh. yeah. Maybe they're just trained to go south. Yeah, I wonder if something about <laughs> Eric would know, but like, is it something with the wind? Uh, or like the mm -hmm. yeah. Now, how do the loons that are newly born eat if the if the uh, parents leave right away? And the parents gonna leave uh, later, like um, so they won't abandon the chick. They stay with the chick until eight weeks, about eight weeks. Oh, yeah. I thought they left right away. No, yeah. so they leave like um, in November, three weeks earlier than the the chick, but yeah, not not before. So they feed. Them. Yeah, 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 yeah. You see them. Yeah, they eat a lot. Yeah, they bang. Uh, I feel like there was other. Yeah. As uh, lakes grow in with more aquatic plants, does that hurt them or does it? Uh, Sorry? As the lake uh, yeah. has grown in with yeah. more plants, does that hurt them or? I mean, I'm sure. It, yeah, I'm sure it's gonna. Uh, it would affect them to be able to chase their prey underwater or even to see them. It's all. It's all um, things that gonna be. Um, Affecting them eventually, yeah, and with all the milfoil and all those invasive aquatic plants, yeah, and also now the one of the con thing is the wake board, wake boat, wake boat, mm -hmm. um, yeah, with all the um, the big waves it created uh, affects a lot the nest when the nesting or even the chick. Um, there's more also. There's less and less shoreline habitat to more human disturbance, uh, but with with all of that, they're still doing really well. But we just want to keep, yeah, collecting information, and yeah. So um, loons are, are territorial. So yeah, pairs 
you're saying a minimum lake size of about 10 acres. Yeah, yeah. Can, can it, like a 100 acre or 200 acre lake support? Yes. Or, or, or more couples? Yeah, in Maine where the lakes are really big, they have, I think, I can't remember the name of the lake, but they have like 20 pair. Wow. Yeah, nesting, yeah. Uh, here in Vermont, we only have like a few lakes that have like three Peachem had three pairs. Green River Reservoir. Green River Reservoir, uh, the Somerset um, Reservoir. Um, those have like multiple uh, pairs, and it's also depending on the shape of the lake. If there's more like um, I don't know how to describe it, like a, a distinct. Uh, territorial de territory then uh, helps support more <coughs> pair. But a peach and bun, oh my god, the two pair are so close. Uh, yeah. And like, and they both had chicks, so they seem to be doing fine, but yeah. And they, like, uh, I live uh, by Lake Illigo in Crassbury, and there's been that same pair for years, like nesting same pair. And this year, there's like a new pair and the the original pair did not nest. I think they spent like so much time uh, defending their territory that they um, yeah they didn't nest. So this year we saw like new nests on legs we had never seen and then legs that always had a pair nesting, nut nesting. Is that yeah the dynamics are changing, yeah. They wouldn't go to a smaller pond the lake for their... Yeah, I mean, sometimes we like see, I'm like, oh my god, how did you get there and how are you going to leave? Uh, who was it this winter? But, um, yeah, it's not idle. Oh, sometimes they, if they raise chicken in like a smaller pond, the adult would go feed themselves on another pond. So they do like travel between pond and things like that but it needs to be a good size just to be able to take off and like uh, land and yeah things like that. So uh, a chick <coughs> grows up, goes out to sea for four years or whatever mm -hmm. and then when they come back they have to find a new unoccupied lake? Yes, uh, yeah. They come back between 25 and 40 miles of the original uh, nesting um, hatch uh, where they were born. Yeah. But their parents may still be on the lake. Yeah, good point. So yeah, in that case, they, they try to use unoccupied lake at first for the first few years until they get really strong and then they can challenge um, another more established pair. Yeah. I'd like to know which, which uh, ponds or lakes in Woodbury do have loons nesting. The green, yeah. yeah. Valley Lake. Any Woodbury. Others? Woodbury? Yeah. In Sabin Pond? Yeah, yeah Sabin yeah. Pond. Yeah. Yeah, that's been on. It's also on a raft. Yeah, they have a raft. Ah, so that bumped it. Yes. I know I hear one that flies over with that. The third sound that you play, and we don't have a big lake. Yeah. And we're on top of Blueberry Hill. There's beaver ponds, but they're small, so yeah. that's why I'm Buck wondering. Lake, too, uh, but oh, they have a nest. Yeah. Oh, that would be Greenwood Lake, place, too. Yeah, Greenwood, Greenwood Lake, Lake, they have chicks, but Buck Lake, I don't... Yeah, every time I've been there this year, there was all, like, loon intruder, and they were just, like... So they didn't nest this year. Mm. But, so we have 134, like, active pair, yeah. So the yeah, a lot of the lakes are occupied. Yeah. Yeah, they just me. Do uh, geese get along with? Oh them? yeah, thank you. You remind me. That's the other thing <laughs> about the raft. So the geese tend to nest earlier than the loon. So we uh, we have developed those goose guard that we call to put on a raft because otherwise the loon are always on the raft before the loon. Sometimes it works out that the, the um, geese, they hatch the, um, the chicks and then the loon get on the raft and start incubation. But um, yeah, there is definitely some competition. Yeah. That happened on, on Salem Pond. Oh yeah, so yeah. I was before, yeah, geese over before the ones got there. Yeah, sometimes we have to put like, I don't know, and uh, we call the goose guard, but it's just like piece of wood with nail and kind of a mesh, and sometimes they still find a, yeah. 
Yeah. A little spot to sneak in. And <laughs> yes. but your, your boss, I think, came and evicted me. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, got yeah. Out of there and There's so and many, and uh, one of the projects I've done in the Arctic, it was also the same thing. The geese, are, the population is like uh, exploding and it uh, impacts the habitat of the other birds. And mm. yeah, no, yeah, yeah, good. Yeah. I'm sure I forget so many things, but... Um. Oh, so... Yeah, if people want to sign up for the newsletter, we don't... We send maybe two a year or something like that. Um, yeah, just feel free, there's some information about... Uh, oh, volunteer... Um, comments, fact... Um, what else? Yeah, that's... Uh, but, mm. The newsletter is specifically about loons. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. That's a good. Yeah, because yeah. we have the VC. But if you sign up specifically on the, uh, yeah, and uh, Eric does a good job with the loon caller. It's really interesting. Um, he picked a, a subject every year and go more deeper into the subject. Um, yeah, it's really interesting. Yeah, he's been doing that for 25, 25 years. Yeah. Yes. Do uh, loons remember and recognize individual humans as crows do? Uh, I was asking that because every year, like we go to the same raft and things, and Eric thinks that they do. Yeah, they do recognize. And, uh, so they know you're a friendly person. Yeah, <laughs> I would think so. But I was, ah, I was in Greenwood um, two years ago. The raft was like sinking, so I had to go add some floats under. And Eric was like, oh, yeah, you go. Uh, they're going to leave the nest and come back right after. But they <laughs> did not leave the, the raft. I was so close. And I was lifting the raft and putting floats. And they stayed there. Oh, and with B, too. With my daughter on number 10 pond, we went and um, add vegetation and the pair, like, they were, I was a bit worried on that <laughs> because they were like, oh, this is my, my territory and I guess they didn't know me yet. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. She, that's she knows, she has the, I, I did, I check on the loons at yes. least once a day, usually twice. Oh, wow, yeah. Um, on number 10 pond. Okay, yeah. And they do know me. I, I oh, nice, them. yeah. They, t today they were diving, and I have a very unusual looking boat. I mm -hmm. back, so it, uh, they know it, you know, and I, and even when the, I call him Chucky. <laughs> yeah, some people <laughs> give names to their loon. Yeah. <laughs> You know, he he comes right under. Today he was diving under my boat back oh, and forth. Like, yeah. And and I was kind of. This is the first time I've ever seen a loon dive and and roll over on oh. his back as he went <laughs> under my boat. So I was kind of interested in watching that, but he seemed fine. Yeah. And uh, but he was kind of. He knows the boat that well. Yeah, I think so. Like they were kind of the shape, the color, all you know, that. It's, it's, yeah. You know, I, I had mm. we had done a rescue on Chucky because he was what, injured. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, about three weeks ago, and I was going through the marsh areas, and I noticed he was lying head down in the water, flat. Mm -hmm. And I was concerned, so I went and got a friend because I don't, I don't. Kayak with a knife in my car. Yeah. <laughs> or in my boat. I yeah. really just don't. And I thought he was caught with fishing line and stuff. So we, I went back, got a friend, and we came back and checked on him and made sure he was okay. And he was fine? Yeah. Um, he was tangled a little bit. Okay. But, yeah. um, you know, we got him cleaned up and we left. And his parents, who were watching us, yeah. The whole time, and we're fine with that. And I, you know, mm -hmm. I've been pecked at by. by yeah, <laughs> I know. It doesn't feel great. <laughs> but it's funny when we did the rescue on Lake Rescue, and when we were like busy taking the fishing line, the loon was so calm, and yeah. it was like, oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very, yeah. very, you know, like, didn't bite us or anything like that. 
mm -hmm. did stay in the same spot yeah. for about 48 hours altogether. Yeah. And so he wasn't feeling his best. Right. Yeah, sometimes when they they do a territorial dispute or something, they get really tired. It, like, have you seen when they, they, they fight? Well, they fight to the death. Yeah, they yeah, get, yeah. I mean, yeah. They really do. Yeah. And, and there's nothing you can do about no. it. No. <laughs> even putting your boat between the two of them, they don't care. <laughs> yeah. yeah, in fact, when they do, uh, they have a change of mate when someone is, a male is challenging an established pair. One time out of three, the loon's going to die, yeah. Mm -hmm. And when we do that necropsy, we're starting to do a loon necropsy to find out how they die and stuff. But sometimes you see their sternum and it's all poked yeah, by the beak, <laughs> the beak of uh, yeah, some attacks, yeah. yeah so. I was just thinking, um, mm -hmm. after the floods, yeah. um, driving up and down Route 14, mm -hmm. I noticed that our lakes were like the color of chocolate milk. Yeah, for, um, yeah. And maybe they still are, I don't even know. Um, but great. would that um, make it really difficult for them to, to catch to, fish? I, like, I, think, I do think so because yeah. that's what we say, like a good um, lake is a clear water to be able, but yeah, some of the lake, it, the the water disturbance is always like that, and like how did even find like. So sometimes they will live in, in yeah. really turbid places. Like yeah, that yeah, yeah. Uh, I have a lake. I can think of the lake, but there's an example. Every time we go there, like how did they find it? Rainsville yeah, it's like, like which one? Always murky. Yeah. Rainsville Yeah. Horrible. Yeah, it's like well, oh, I guess. Hmm. Well. Can I ask who else has named their loons? <laughs> uh, yeah. I name my loons every year. And I, but the, <laughs> this, uh, that was the loon that was at least 31 years old and a new work pond. And yeah, the resident, I don't know how they were, they, they give him a name, I forgot the name. But yeah, people get really <laughs> attached. We, we, named, uh, we named ours Claire. Oh, okay. It's Claire the loon. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, that's cute. <laughs> yeah. And um, so, yeah, we're trying to do more bending to. Um, we started again last uh, year, and especially to help us to identify uh, the loon. And, but, yeah. And other reasons. But, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs>